This video is supported by Lumerit Scholar. Space has always been the new frontier. But maybe now more than ever. As satellites are getting smaller and cheaper, more and more businesses are getting into the space game. They're building their own satellites to give them an edge on the competition and provide services they've never been able to provide before. This has led to a boom of launch services that are bringing down the cost of getting things into space. And while the private industries are the ones getting all the headlines these days, the government agencies still have a few tricks up their sleeve. For instance, in June of 2014, the Russian Space Agency launched 37 satellites into orbit on one launch. Nobody had ever done that before. That was a world record. Nobody had, private or public, had shown that level of functionality. And then India said, hold my kingfisher. On this channel, I've covered NASA, SpaceX, Blue Origin, Rocket Lab, all of whom are at least partly based in the United States. But when I asked you guys what agencies around the world you'd like to hear the most about, the one that came up the most was ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization. ISRO, or ISRO, Cletus, do they call it ISRO? Well, I don't know. I'm going with it. ISRO was not a group that's particularly well known in the West, especially here in the United States, but they had built up an impressive track record that should be recognized. ISRO was founded in 1969 and has served as a launch provider for science projects for the Indian government, as one might expect, but as a developing nation with a much smaller economy than the superpowers that were dominating the space race, they had to get creative. And as often happens, what was once a hindrance in the early days of their program now is a huge advantage as private companies around the world are lowering the cost of space flight, they're actually able to compete on that level. And no mission exemplifies this advantage better than mission PSLV-C37, which put 104 satellites into orbit on one launch on February 15th, 2017. Yeah, just a reminder, the previous record was 37. They tripled the old record. The mission was launched on their Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, or PSLV, in the XL configuration for heavier payloads from the Satish Dhawan Space Center with 1,378 kilograms of payload on board. It carried 104 satellites from seven different countries. The main payload was the Cardasat 2D satellite, an Earth observing satellite built by ISRO. The rest of the satellites were nano satellites, two of which were also built by ISRO, with others coming from Kazakhstan, Israel, the Netherlands, Switzerland, and the United Arab Emirates. The other 88 nano satellites all came from the United States, but specifically from a company called Planet Labs, which is an Earth imaging company that employs a fleet of satellites they call doves that constantly monitor changes in real time on the planet's surface. It's actually a cool site, I'll put a link down in the description. To get all these satellites in orbit required a rapid fire release every few seconds while it was traveling through orbit at 27,000 kilometers an hour, and somehow do that without them smashing into each other. They did this in three stages. First, the big Cardasat satellite, along with the two Indian CubeSats, which were released axially along the vehicle, then followed by 81 of the nano satellites in a radial direction away from the vehicle, then launching the last 20 satellites in a different sequence. This was a remarkable feat of engineering, and it was only made possible because of the flexibility of the PSLV rocket. The PSLV in its XL configuration stands at 44 meters tall, the Falcon 9 is 70 meters just for comparison, and it's a unique four-stage design with an alternating solid and liquid rocket engines. It comes in three configurations, the G, the CA, and the XL, and uses six strap-on solid rocket boosters on the first stage for extra thrust off the ground, except for the CA variant, which stands for core alone. The second stage is a liquid fuel stage powered by ISRO's Vikas engine that gets the rocket past max Q and out of the atmospheric phase of flight. The third stage goes back to a solid rocket booster pushing 240 kilonewtons to reach orbital velocity, and then the fourth stage is powered by two liquid engines to get the payload into the desired orbit. Now, four stages sounds pretty complex, but not all launches are going to need all four stages, so it creates sort of a modular design so that the rocket can be adjusted for the needs of the launch. This allows for less waste and brings the cost of launches down. It's a pretty stellar idea. Get it? Stellar? Like stars? Somebody out there's laughing. This flexibility has allowed the PSLV to become the workhorse of ISRO's lineup, launching 43 successful launches, some of which were pretty far from low Earth orbit. In 2008, ISRO launched the Chandrayaan-1 mission to the moon, which included an orbiter vehicle and a polar impactor called the Moon Impact Probe. The impactor module slammed into the south pole of the moon and Chandrayaan evaluated the debris which put to rest the debate over whether or not there's water ice on the moon. Hint, there is. While the impact might not be a uh, landing per se, it does make India only the fourth country in the world to put something on the moon. Even more impressive, in 2013, Israel launched the Mongolian mission, which was also called the Mars Orbiter mission, or MOM. I'll stick with MOM, fewer syllables. MOM entered orbit around Mars in September of 2014 with no problems, and while it's considered to be a technology demonstration, 
meaning it's designed to test the communications and telemetry systems required for interplanetary travel, it carried five instruments that continue to monitor the atmosphere and conditions on Mars to this day. This mission made India only one of four countries that have been able to reach Mars, and they're the only one that got it right on the first try. Even more impressive? The whole thing only cost $73 million. I mean, you can't even get a college degree for that these days. A future Mars orbiter is in the works to go sometime in the early 2020s, this time with a lot more scientific instruments on board. And all of these missions were carried out by the PSLV. That is one seriously impressive rocket. But it's not the only one in their lineup. There's actually a much bigger one called the GSLV, or Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle. This is a heavy lift vehicle. It's capable of carrying 2,500 kilograms to geostationary orbit or 5,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit. This one's 49 meters tall, so a little bit bigger than the PSLV, and it has three stages instead of four. This one first flew in 2001, but seems to have hit its stride in 2014, launching every year since then. The next generation of the GSLV, the GSLV Mark III, has only flown a couple of times, so it's still kind of in development, but it is being planned to be used for manned missions starting in 2024. So in this new Wild West of space, there's a lot of people to keep your eyes on, but don't count out the underdogs. You may not hear a lot about SRO through all the noise, but their economical approach to space flight is opening up innovations and opportunities that are gonna benefit us all. And we're gonna need all the help we can get. If you wanna get in on all this hot space action, you're gonna need an education. Unfortunately, college degrees cost about as much as India's mission to Mars. But luckily there is a better way. It's called Lumerit.com. Lumerit is a smart way to plan for college because they do the planning for you. You tell Lumerit where you'd like to get your degree and they search the world for transferable credits from less expensive online courses. Courses you can take from home on your own time. So not only is it less expensive, it's less of a hassle. Do you know what parking costs on college campuses these days? With Lumerit, you can park on your couch. It all means you get your degree faster, cheaper, and with less headache than the traditional route. And all the transfers are guaranteed. You can get a free quote if you go to lumerit.com slash answers with Joe and maybe it'll save you money. You never know. There's only one way to find out. Luckily, it's free. Starting your life burdened by student loans is like running a horse race with the horse on your back. Don't do it without exploring all the options. Lumerit is one of those options. So go check it out. lumerit.com slash answers with Joe for a free quote. I want to thank Lumerit for sponsoring this video and a big shout out to the Answer Files on Patreon who help support this thing and they've got an amazing community going on over there. I love you guys. Thank you so much. There's some new people that have joined. Let me give you a shout out real quick. We've got Steve Reberg, Marina Nikoleva, Stevanova, Nick Kusak, Peter Beachy, Steven Diaz, Kyla Lupo, Raymond Impastado, uh, PHAZ90771, maybe you're a robot, and Johnny Lee. <laughs> thank you guys so much. If you would like to join them and be a part of the community and get cool perks that other people don't get to get, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. Let me know in the comments down below who you would like to see covered next space agency wise around the world. Please like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, please do check out some of my other videos. And only if you like them, subscribe because then you'll get to see my videos as soon as they come out on Mondays and Thursdays. And click the bell. I gotta remind you guys to click the bell now. All right, thanks again for watching. You guys go out, have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.